and end, and end, and end, and end, and end, and end, and end. Do you hear that? It's like the heartbeat of the world. And, 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 and. It's not a question of hearing so much. It's a question of knowing there's something there to listen to. And, and. Yes, that's it. And, 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 and. The center, the great connector. Yes, it's coming clearer now. And, 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 and. And my father's dying of cancer. And I have a ton of homework tonight. And no one noticed that I got my hair cut. And Venice will be like underwater within the next decade. And I got rejected by every school I applied to. And I have a hangnail. And my boyfriend makes a funny noise when we kiss. And I can't clear 13 feet in the pool vault. And then, and then, I think I want to kill myself. And I swear, they're making candy bars smaller and smaller than they used to. And my favorite pants don't fit anymore. And then, and then, my brother is going to a And And, do you hear it? Do you get it? And, not then. He had a hernia, then she kissed her cat. Not but, he had a hernia, but she kissed her cat. Not because. He had a hernia because she kissed her cat, and he had a hernia, and she kissed her cat, and I wet the bed, and they experienced deja vu, and Mortimer imagined he was an astronaut, and, 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 not chronology, not contradiction, not causality, simultaneity, these events, these moments linked solely by their concurrent existence, linked solely by and. And you are sitting there, and you are sitting there, and you, at the exact same time, are sitting right there, side by side universes. Let me tell you a story. I want to tell you a story. Three nights ago, I was... All right, forget the story for the time being. Just uh, let's go back to these other people. And, remember that, and. Yeah, so it's pretty much decided. It's inevitable, I guess. Dad's cancer. The prognosis is pretty much set. I mean, we've been through the prayer circles and all. They're still going on. But the prayers have changed. From asking for healing to asking for dealing. Acceptance. That kind of thing. So, he's home now, Dad. He's got quite a bit of equipment with him. Tanks, hoses, a special bed. He wanted to come home. And the doctor said it would be okay. Or as okay as being anywhere. Home, the park, the hospital, Disneyland, wherever. I guess that's one good thing about dying. It's portable. And? Who do my teachers think they are? Or, a better question, who do they think I am? A homework machine? The geek of all geeks who has no life, who wants to spend five hours a night on schoolwork? <laughs> Listen, here's a basic concept. Home, school. Home, school. Two separate places. They should stay separate. I don't bring my lawn into the school so I can do my raking there, do I? I don't bring my sister into the school so I can have my arguments with her there, do I? No, those are home things to be done at home. So why should I bring my school things into my home? Home, school. Keep them separate. And? Okay, I can take that my brother didn't notice my haircut. No big deal. He probably wouldn't notice if his own face fell off. And my father, well, where do you think my brother got his attention to detail from? 
Now my mother noticed, but since she drove me to the appointment in the first place, that doesn't count. Nothing from my teachers, nothing from my classmates, nothing from the bus driver, nothing from the dog, the cat, the goldfish. I could live with all this non-attention to my haircut, but when I corner Jason, my supposed boyfriend of three months, and ask him point blank, notice anything different? When he looks me up and down and says, new bra, <laughs> that put me over the edge. And? And we are like killing the planet with all of our cars and like our hairspray. It's like we are causing all this global warming. Like people can't even ski in the Alps anymore. I heard. And that's like so not right. That is practically un-American, if you ask me. And Venice, I told you about that, didn't I? Like, I mean, if I wanted to go to Venice and have some guy singing to me on one of those curved canoe things, those cannolis or those gondolas, that's it. If I were to like go and do that in say 10 years, I might not even be able to because all there would be was like water. And you can't take a gondola ride on just water if you don't like have any Venice to like be in. It's just so sad. I can't even like tell you. I need to tell you this story. Three nights ago, we were all home, my family. My mother, my father, my two sisters. It was about nine o'clock. My older sister, she was... Uh, no, no, I shouldn't start there. Not yet, not yet. Okay, uh, let's just go back to these other people. Right, and... Clemson was my reach school. I got rejected. No big surprise. I was okay with that. Most kids get rejected by their reach schools, right? That's why they're called reach schools after all. <laughs> Ugh, Wofford. That was what you might call my semi-reach. I would have felt lucky if I'd gotten in. I didn't get the chance to feel lucky though. Rejection two from Wofford. But I was okay because I still had Limestone and Charleston and I was sure I was going to make it into at least one of them. If not both. I mean, they're both decent schools. I wouldn't have had to hang my head until they sent me the I'm sorry, but you're just not worthy of us letters. Now I can justifiably hang my head in complete shame. Give us another, give us another, and. I'm always getting these hangnails. Don't you hate that? They get caught on everything and they hurt. Then they get all red and irritated and I try not to chew on them, but it's like they're practically calling to you. <sighs> my fingers look like, uh... I don't know what they look like. They look like fingers with hangnails on them. Why do you suppose I always get them? Not everybody gets them. I don't think they're hereditary or anything. Unless maybe dry skin is hereditary, but they're not exactly dry. They're more like... I don't know what they're like. They're like fingers with hangnails on them. And I have them, and they hurt. And I'm tempted to bite my fingers off. Do you get them? One more, then I'll... One more, then. And? He's a great guy. He really is. He's sort of old-fashioned about things. He opened door for me, he carries my books. I know, I know, pretty corny. But I like it. He's sweet, considerate. He calls me when he says he's going to. He picks me up on time. He bought me a beautiful rose yesterday. So why am I being so crazy as to actually thinking about breaking up with him just because he's a noisy kisser. I mean, that's so shallow. I'm not like that, usually. It's just that, okay, whenever we start to kiss, his nose, it clicks. Somewhere way up in his nasal passages, whenever we go to kiss, his nose makes this clicking noise. I can't ignore it. Believe me, I've tried. It's just that Whenever we start to kiss, I think of this documentary I once saw about this African tribe that communicates with clicks. I don't know about you, 
but that really doesn't set the romantic mood. Yes, good, you have to keep this in mind too. You have to remember that all of these things are going on at the exact same time, connected only by proximity. I mean, within one relatively small area, you have all of these people dealing with their various situations within, as the case here, Within the confines of a single building of a school, you have all of these things going on, and this, and that, and this, and that. But it's not really something that you can separate like that. I mean, it looks like it has an order to it, but that's arbitrary. It's not one, then two, then three, then four. That's artificial. It's and, 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 concurrently, not chronologically. It's like this. You see, it's confusion, pandemonium. We have to single people out just to hear them. I come in at 11 feet. Everybody around me is like, ooh, what a stud. She's coming in at 11. I can clear my eyes shut. I can clear 11 feet with a twisted ankle. And that's no joke because I did it two weeks ago at the meet against Springville. Hell, I could come in at 11 six if I wanted. No problem. I haven't missed that height all year. Know what? I could come in at 13 feet. I could just hear them all if I did that. Oh man, she must be going for a record. Coming in at 13? She's crazy good. But here's what they don't know. The second I hear that the bar has been raised above 13 feet, I'm done. I mean, I could have cleared 13 on my first attempt by a foot and a half, but when I hear anything over that number, Anything. 13 feet, half an inch. I'm done. I shut down. I just can't clear it. Yes, good. We singled her out for just a moment so that she could be heard, which is nice, but when we do that, we can miss the point. We can forget about the simultaneity, the and factor. So try not to. It's crucial. Crucial. Three nights ago, I was... God, how could I not know? I'm still not ready. And... Do you know what a scrim is? A scrim is a type of curtain. And when you shine a light on it from the front, it's opaque. But when you shine a light on it from behind, you can see through it. Usually, even when you can see through it, a scrim makes whatever's behind it kind of dull. Kind of... muted. Unless you really blast a light on it, the colors get dulled down by a scrim. You know what? I see the whole world like that. Like everything's behind a scrim and the backlighting isn't very strong. I mean, maybe the world isn't really bleak. I admit it's probably just me. That I'm the one with the scrim over my eyes like a blindfold. Either way, it all looks dull and shadowy to me. All the time. I know how to get into my father's gun cabinet. And? Right now, all I have to go off is a hunch. But hey, hunches have led to a lot of very important, like, discoveries. When Newton got hit on the head with an apple, even though that probably never happened in real history, it gave him a hunch. And he went on and invented gravity. So my hunch is, candy bars have been getting smaller and smaller than they used to. And it's not just me. It's not that my mouth was smaller and I thought the candy bars were bigger. Plus, here's the thing. Now they have these king size bars. And they're like double the money than the regular ones are. Seriously, I'm going to do a study on this. Right, there's just two left. I'll let them finish and then I'll tell my story. But remember, all at once, right? Simultaneity. And Your clothes aren't just for covering you up and keeping you warm, of course. They make you feel good when you wear just the right ones. If they fit just right and look just right, they comfort. They communicate something both out to other people and back to you. They tell you you're alright, you are who you think you are, who you want to be. So when your favorite clothes start not fitting anymore, not because you've outgrown them since you're getting older, but because you're getting fat again, they hurt you. They're tight and they pinch, sure, but worse than that, they hurt you because they say out to other people and back to you that you're not alright. You're a tub of lard again. 
And? He's such an idiot, my brother is. Such a stupid, macho, narrow-minded, hero-loving idiot. You know, he actually came to me yesterday with a huge grin on his face and said he's shipping out to Iraq next week. Yes, he said, I'm going to get me some action. I'm going to get me some action? How can two people like my parents combine their genes and produce him and combine them again to produce me? I just do not understand how he can possibly think going to fight in that war is some kind of an adventure that he's just going to go play his war games and come home unscathed. The problem, problem is, if he weren't my brother, I could just write him off as an ignorant bullethead and send him on his merry way. The, the problem is, I love him more than I can say, and I'm going to worry every damn second he is over there. Okay, everyone has had their say. It's incredible, don't you think? While his father is dying, he's worried about the shrinking of candy bars, and she's anxious about clearing a particular height on the pole vault, and she's depressed about the way that her pants fit while they are planning suicide at the very same moment that he has another hangnail. It's amazing, and somehow so terrible. My story. I need to tell you about that. I can't do it with just words, though. I have to have you see it. It'll just take me a minute to set this up. I, I, I don't want you to miss what I'm trying to convey here. I just need some visuals. This is my father. Say hello, Dad. Just kidding. Right, uh, I'll finish getting this set up. If I had the resources, I'd bring in the whole house so you can get a better understanding of the various spatial relationships between these scenes that are playing out. My father is downstairs in the den. My mother is upstairs about 20 or so feet away, up and over in my parents' bedroom. My little sister is upstairs too, actually quite close to my mother, separated by only a wall. My older sister is downstairs in her room, which is relatively close to... I can't believe it. I almost forgot about me. Right. I'm there too, of course, uh, in the downstairs living room, which, as I said, is fairly close to my sister's room. My older sister's. Her name is Adrian. You can't see her. She's under the blanket. That's how it was. My younger sister is Julia, my mother. Donna, my father, is Brian. I am Aaron. This is my house, three nights ago, and now that I look at what I've created, I'm not sure that I can tell you what happened. So, what do you make of all of this, anyway? The and factor, as I call it. How do you square it? Or do you even try? I mean, how are we supposed to deal with the fact that at any given moment, a million separate happenings are playing out? More than a million. A billion. A billion billion. But you can lose track when you start to get into numbers that astronomical. You can't lose track so easily when you consider the size, the space, the confines of one place, one school, one house. I mean, this is only a sampling up here. Iraq and Venice, noisy kisses and too much homework. You have to deal with the chaos somehow. You have to, don't you? So, what are we to do? What are we supposed to do? Just listen? And? How can I be angry at my own father because his cells have mutated and now they're killing him? How can I? But I am. I am so mad at him. And? Let's at least have a law, okay? A law that if you've been working on homework for over an hour, you have to quit and go watch television or something. And? I spent two hours waiting and one and a half hours actually getting it cut. Only to have him think I got a new bra? I guess I know what he pays attention to. And? And what about the polar bears? I mean, like in a hundred years, nobody will even have the chance to have a coat made out of a polar bear because they'll be like, gone! And? Yesterday. Yesterday was the final blow! The one I never expected. The letter from Coastal Carolina. My safety school. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. 
So much for safety. And, have you ever heard about how amputees can still feel their missing limbs? I wonder if people who have lost their fingers can still feel phantom hangnails. And, what am I supposed to do? Hand them one of those nasal strips before we go to kiss? I don't see that improving our relationship. And, my coach even tried to fool me one day. He told me the height was 12'9 when it was actually 13'3. Did it help? No. Somehow my brain knows. It's allergic to anything over 13. And? I don't want to make a mess. We have some rolls of plastic from when we painted the ceilings. Maybe I'll put it over the floors and the furniture before I do it. It'll save mom some trouble. And? I don't want to sound paranoid or anything, but candy bars are very important to children. So when you shrink them and charge the same price, it's a big national lie. And? Sure, I could just go buy myself some bigger pants, but you know what? You know what price you pay for that? You pay a hefty self-esteem tax. And? Soldiers are sons and grandsons and husbands and nephews and brothers. Stupid macho brothers and if they die, their brothers will die along with them. I watched you. I watched you as you listened. You frowned, you smiled, you grimaced, you laughed from one moment to the next. One story to the next. You reacted. That's good. That's human. But remember. Remember the phenomenon that I've been outlining. How do we laugh and smile and shout for joy and scream for grief? How do we react to all of it going on around us every, every second? Or should we even try? Three nights ago, I was home. My father was down in the den, nodding off as he's trying to finish up some work. Oh, man, I can never stay awake at this time of night. And my mother is upstairs in the bedroom, saying prayers. God, tell me what we might do to serve thee. And Julia is playing with her toy house. Darn it! I wish I had another tea set! And I am down in the living room, in the basement, playing with my Xbox, trying to... So, what should we do? Should we manipulate the confluence of concomitant conflicts? Mix them around for our own enjoyment and possible edification? And my father's dying of... homework. Ha! <laughs> and I have a ton of candy bars tonight. Yeah! And my boyfriend makes 13 feet in the pole vault when he kisses me? That's a good one. And I got rejected by every hangnail I applied to. That's gotta hurt, huh? And my haircut will be like underwater within the next decade. That sounds like a fashion problem. And my kiss has a hangnail? I'm not quite sure how that works. And no one noticed my... Venice? <laughs> my Venice. That's... that's great. And I can't kill myself in the pole vault. I bet you can. And... I think I want to make a funny noise. Well, be our guest. <laughs> and I swear, Iraq is getting smaller and smaller than it used to. Must have shrunk in the wash. And my favorite cancer doesn't fit anymore. Favorite cancer. Perfect. And my brother is going to school? Wasn't that a hoot, the old Mad Libs treatment? Mix and match troubles, a game you can play at home. Wasn't that a laugh riot? Wasn't that... Maybe making light of it all, maybe that's how we're supposed to... Maybe that's what we should... If you haven't inferred this fact by this point, I am concurrently desperate to tell you my story and petrified to tell you my story. Notice that. The and factor even in the tiny space of my own mind. Coexisting and contradictory desires. I don't lack intelligence. I hope you would have seen that fact demonstrated too. I mean... Someone lacking intelligence wouldn't have had the wherewithal to put together this production, this extravaganza illustrating his inner conflict. No, that takes smarts. 
uh, you've heard my words, my vocabulary. How many stupid people do you know who can throw around words like concurrently and simultaneity and wherewithal and spatial relationships? My grades and test scores will bear out my assertion. I'm not stupid. I'm not unaware. I... How could I not have known? And my father is in the den, practically asleep. And my mother is upstairs, trying to speak to God. And Julia is in her room, redecorating her dollhouse. And I am downstairs, playing Gudrun's War, a game of world domination set in a planet far from Earth. I'm trying to figure out how to defeat the Kragenites, the arch enemy of Gudrun. Adrian is in her room. She's not alone. So, what are we supposed to do? Rank them? Categorize them? I mean, it's ridiculous to think that we can handle the AND factor in its entirety. <laughs> Shut up! You have to make distinctions. Divisions. Separations. You can't help it. It's human tendency. He sleeps a lot now. We all just take turns being with him. How serious, then, is this situation? Fleetingly insignificant gets a 1. Globally cataclysmic, a 10. Father dying of cancer, 7. I'm never going to get this done. And they're just going to pile on more tomorrow. Homework overload. Four. And it's not like I got a trim either. I totally changed my look. Hair troubles. Three. I mean, if we don't like smarten up and start saving on our gas, our whole ozone will be gone. Now, here's where it gets tough. She's talking about climate change, which might be in the 910 category, but she's being completely selfish with her perspective, which might bring it down to a 3 or a 4 or even lower. Gotta take an average. 6. I'm out of options. What? Like, I'm even going to consider Miller Mott's. Again, the attitude causes some... 4. My mother picked up a skin lotion I'm going to try. Two. Maybe I should start making noises of my own when we kiss. To drown him out. 2.5. Or, no, if I gave Haircut Girl a three, then... You see how hard this is? Seriously, I even went online to see if there was such thing as a sports hypnotist. Is college disappointment worse than pole vault disappointment? Three. I've been working on a note for the past week. Should imminent death from cancer rank as high as imminent death from self-destruction? Six. But that puts them on par with the global warming girl. I don't know. I wish I could get my hands on a ten-year-old candy bar so I could compare. That, I give a one. So now my once favorite pants hang in my closet like a last place ribbon of shame. I don't know, she really seems to be in pain over this whole weight gain thing, but in the grand scale of the universe, a five? Or four? No, five. So, he's going over there, and every time the phone rings, we're all gonna cringe. Above the pants, but below the suicide. Five point five, because maybe his brother won't be killed over there, but Embedded in the situation, is there not a complaint about a world where wars happen? Or at least an objection to this war in particular? Maybe it's a six. Right, so what we've done is we've taken all the various components from one simultaneous and, and we've ranked them. So now, perhaps we should group them. Right. Um, eights through tens over here. Sevens and sixes right there. Five through three, take that spot right there. Anything below a three over here. Right, so we've made distinctions between these concomitant situations, and I thought I had four groups. Right, I didn't rank anything above a seven. Okay, that, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, so what we've done here is, what we have here is, 
something completely useless. Go away, all of you. Go away. Right, you've made your point. Candy bars and cancer and noisy kisses and suicide and too much homework and hangnails and, and, and. We get it. And mom is upstairs, supplicating God. And dad is in the den, practically asleep. And Julia is in her room. And I am trying to conquer an electronic non-world. And Adrian with her. And Adrian being, never mind, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry, I meant to tell you what this all was for, but I, I didn't mean to waste your time. Aaron! Adrian, I, um, how are you doing? I'm all right, considering. Good, that's good. Why have you been avoiding me? I haven't. I, I haven't been meaning to. That was quite a bomb I dropped on you last night. Hey, no, I'm your brother. If you can't tell me, then... Oh, yeah, still, I'm sure it wasn't easy to hear. No, no, that's for sure, but it wasn't easy for you to tell, either. I told Mom. Oh, man, how did that go? <laughs> She's praying for strength. Naturally. She's going to tell Dad, and then I guess we're going to go down to the police station. Yeah, I, I guess you do have to do that. Are you okay staying with Julia? Sure, that's fine. She doesn't need to know No, no, of course not. Hey. Yeah? Are you okay? Oh, sure, Adrian. You don't have to worry about me. I'm the one who should be asking you. Aaron. Yeah? I need your help. Sure, Dree, I'm here. I need you to talk to me or really tell me how you're feeling. Even if it's, uh, don't treat me like I'm a broken China doll. I came to you first, remember? I told you because I trusted you to be real with me. Mom and Dad, they're going to be off the charts. And I don't know what's going to happen with my friends once the word gets out. Right. So let's try this again. Are you okay? No, no, Adrian, no I'm not. That makes two of us. Uh, tell me. It's like the whole world is... Adrian, Mom was upstairs, and Dad was down in the den, and Julia was in her room, and I was in the living room, not 15 feet from you. Adrian, I was playing a video game. Do you understand? I was playing a video game not 15 feet from, from you. Being raped. God, how could I not have known? You couldn't, Aaron. You couldn't have. What kind of world is this? I'm so sorry. It's okay. I should have known. It's not your fault. I'm sorry, I should have known. You couldn't have. Nobody could have. And now I'm here feeling sorry for myself, burdening you when you were the one. Hey, who... little bro, listen. This is it. This is the world, right? It's people blowing out birthday candles at the same time as people dying in a fire. At the same time as a baby being born. At the same time as a grandmother taking her last breath. At the same time as a little brother is enjoying his video game. At the same time as his sister is being raped by the boy she thought really loved her. I should have known. No, knowing isn't it. Knowing won't save us. This will save us. You are saving me right now. Keep saving me, Aaron. I need you to save me.